Welcome to the Hardcore MBA Podcast with your host, Erland Bakke. Would you like to have a free copy of the number one international best-selling book, Never Work Again? All you have to do is rate, review, and subscribe to Hardcore MBA Podcast on iTunes and email us a screenshot of your review to Erland at MrOutsource.com. Hello, Erland back here, signing in from beautiful London town, city and resort. I'm in central London, and today we have Peter Sage. Now, Peter has more than 25 years' experience in growing fast-paced enterprises. He is an expert in entrepreneurship, and he boasts 15 startups before the age of 30. I'd only failed at four before the age of 30. Um, And I had one successful successful company, uh, which is still running. He currently serves on the Entrepreneurship Advisory Board for INSED, the top business school, one of the top business schools in the world. And uh, he teaches now entrepreneurs in how to make money, how to become an enlightened entrepreneur. And I actually saw Peter speak last week, and I was very inspired. So I went up to him afterwards and asked him kindly if he would be on the Hardcore MBA show. Peter. Welcome to the podcast. Well, welcome. Thank you, Alan. It's a pleasure to be here. So why are you so in- interested in enlightened entrepreneurship? Uh, I think that um, we, we obviously don't get to vote whether we mature biologically. That's something that, unfortunately, while we can try and you know, slow down the process, depending on what marketing message you want to believe into, um, uh, in various ways, but what we do get to vote on is whether we grow uh, emotionally. And business for many, many years has really been the domain of the, the sort of yeah, sacrifice, struggle, efforts, uh, looking to, to hopefully arrive at a place that we feel has given our life some meaning that we can then at that point enjoy, relax, etc. And the challenge of what I've seen over the years is that there's so many entrepreneurs, myself included, certainly my 20s, uh, and friends of mine, that were working so hard to get to somewhere that if they stop and took a breath, they realize they'd already have it. And, you know, I've seen way too many people lose health, lose relationships with their family, miss their kids growing up because they were too busy putting so much time and effort into what they thought was going to get them the life that they, they then wanted only to find out that they didn't have a wife anymore, a relationship or yeah, a, uh, uh, the, the fact that they'd missed their kids yeah, recitals. And, you know, you don't want to be the richest man in the graveyard. So I think entrepreneurship needs to have a new distinction rather than it being a vehicle to try and make more money, to try and get a better life so that we think we can arrive somewhere. I think it's time to have a little more enlightened view so that entrepreneurship is a a vehicle instead to express somebody's passion and accentuate some natural gifts in a way that adds value to society and the world. And as a byproduct of that, you're enjoying the journey and making money. That to me sounds like a better deal than you know, 130 hours a week, gray hair, stress, heart attacks, and, and, uh, and missing the most important things of life. And why does this come about? Why do we put ourselves under 130 hour work weeks and the gray hair and the heart attacks? Why, what, what does that, um, why do we want that? <laughs> uh, ultimately, because we're trying to get to a place that we feel isn't where we're at. We're trying to chase certainty. We're trying to chase the, the need to, to feel as if we've proved to the world that we're good enough. We're trying to get to a, a lifestyle that we're told by the media should be the only place where happiness exists. Uh, and many other false misnomers that you know, have been proved to be um, a, a fallacy time and again. I mean, you, you get so many entrepreneurs that do that journey and work their, their butt off to get to a, a place where they thought they'd be happy, only to find out at the top of Success Mountain they want to jump off because it wasn't what they were sold as the dream. Now, as a parallel to that, you could take traditional education. Traditional education for many, many decades sold the dream of work hard, you know, learn how to pass tests, work for somebody else, and if you stay hard and long enough at college and university, you'll get a piece of paper signed by somebody you've never met to validate your intelligence, and therefore you'll be able to get a better job, get a better career, earn more money, and retire happy. And you know, everyone now starts to realize that that isn't the case. You know, I mean, Luckily, I never suffered the disadvantage of college. But from a perspective of going through traditional education, if that is the track you're looking for, it doesn't work. It's a fallacy. Most people leaving university today qualify to be a barrister, yeah, end up working as a barista. 
and wonder what happened apart from the fact they've got you know tens of thousands of pounds in student debt and you know the, the whole dream that they were sold on initially you know it turns out in today's 21st century reality not to have actually materialized so same thing what one of the things that i I, I try to do is is to live more and more in the moment to uh, do my bucket. I actually have a bucket list on YouTube, uh, so I'll, I'll travel somewhere, I'll do something, I'll film it, I'll publish it. Um, it's it's my way of sort of doing the kind of things that I want to do right now. Um, I do still, however, feel this um, that my ambition kind of oftentimes ruins the pleasure of doing something. Um, I mean, being uh, having aspirations is 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 a is a good thing as long as you don't ruin the the journey. So, what are the um, the tricks for enjoying the journey? There's no trick. It's a level of awareness. You know, you've you've got to understand a couple of fundamental points that you know the the essence of life is not to be happy. The essence of life is to be authentic. And the authentic journey, if you look back on any great people in history that have taken that journey. You know, it's never been about trying to stay on the upside of the happiness curve. You know, some of our lowest moments, when we look back six months later, have been our greatest gifts. You know, we think, well, thank goodness that happened, otherwise we wouldn't be doing this now. You know, or you know, we, we go through a divorce, which is a, a traumatic experience, only to realize and experience the freedom on the other side once that pain has transcended. So yeah, it's not about... Uh, convincing ourselves that, oh, we've got to enjoy the, 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 the journey. No, we've got to embrace the journey, the ups, the downs. You know, the strongest trees don't grow in the best soil. They grow in the strongest winds. Uh, and so yeah, if you really want a life of meaning, pray for strong winds. Yeah, happiness is nothing more than a present time condition of thinking happy thoughts. That's it. Case closed. You, yeah, it doesn't get much more complicated than that. We just set the rules up saying that, oh, in order for me to give myself permission to think happy thoughts, then the outer world has to look a certain way, which it doesn't look right now. Therefore, I'm not happy. You know, or when I get to a certain place and I've arrived, then I'll be happy. Well, that's, that, that's a fallacy. Yeah, if you're so committed to getting to the end of the journey in order to have arrived, go book your funeral today. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, or, or what's the point? Yeah, it's like taking it one. You know, if, if you on your bucket list of trips um, decided that you know, you, you're going to set up a, a, a place, uh, forty different destinations that you're going to go and tick off, and you're going to take a year off to go and do them, and you're explaining this incredible trip to one of your friends that this is it, this is your your lifetime bucket list trip that is going to be so incredible, and you've got all of these different places in there, and you're going around the world, and your friend cuts you short and says, "Well, yeah, well, where, where do you finish?" And you go, oh, no, let me tell you about where I'm going first. We've got Machu Picchu and the pyramids and the northern lights and, you know, and the wildebeest migration. Well, oh, no, no, I don't care about that. Where do you finish? And what's your, what's your final destination? Where, where do you end up at the end of this trip? And you're like, well, actually, I haven't even planned that far ahead, to be honest. I'm, I'm, you know, uh, I just want to enjoy the journey. That is life. That is the game. And sometimes you're waiting at an airport and sometimes you're in a hot air balloon appreciating you know, the, the savannas of Africa. Yeah, it's part of the journey, and if you can understand that and flow with that level of, of current yeah, in the river rather than try and swim upstream against it every time there's a bend that goes left or right you don't agree with, then you start to get into the spirit of understanding what life's about. That's my experience. And when you choose to become an entrepreneur, there is going to be challenges. Um, is that <laughs> your experience as well? <laughs> Yeah, when you say challenges, what you mean is that the outer world is not going to fit the pictures of what you want the outer world to look like at that moment in time. Yeah, that, that's what most people call a challenge. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like uh, uh, people say, oh, we, we like surprises. Well, no, we don't. We, we like surprises that we want. The surprises we don't want, we call challenges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? So how do you roll with that? How do you experience the fact that you know, if you are going through life clinging to the illusion of certainty, then you will be uh, forever locked in a smaller and smaller box of experience and happiness. It's not going to work. There is no certainty in life, let alone business as an entrepreneur. It's just that business as an entrepreneur, you, you tend to discover that reality a little sooner than if you have a job. But there's no certainty in a job. You know, the only certainty you have in a job is your ability to make your widget or do your job description and the ability of your boss, CEO, or managing director to run his or her company. That's it. Hmm. 
of certainty. Yeah. So, yeah, if you have a situation where you say, oh, we're going to have challenges as an entrepreneur, the, the reason why you become an entrepreneur is the defining characteristic as to whether you embrace those challenges or run away from them. If you're becoming an entrepreneur because, as I said, you know, it's something that you're committed to doing as an expression of your greatness, knowing that you're going to face strong wins, then you'll find and dig deep yeah, and have the resourcefulness and the passion to go through those challenges when they show up. Yeah, knowing that every single challenge, when you're experiencing growth, every single challenge that you solve will be immediately replaced by a more complicated challenge. That's the game. Sign up for it. Be okay with it. It's part of the deal. Yeah, you don't get better at tennis by playing people you can beat. Mm. So, yeah, if, if you're signing up as an entrepreneur because you think it's getting away from the, uh, the, the financial slavery of a job and that's your reason, then you're about to quit as soon as you're 35 seconds into your business plan and realize that something shows up that wasn't planned for. So I've got uh, two questions in relation to this. Um, why do we need uh, – why is there a need for certainty? What, what in the uh, human condition demands certainty? Well, yeah, I, I'm not a, an evolutionary you know, biological specialist, but you know, I do sort of tend to spot patterns in, in human behavior. You know, we have uh, a need for certainty, but also a need for uncertainty. There's a balance there. It's inherent in what we need, in, in who we are and how we're made up. You know, so you know, we have to have some level of certainty. If I, if I wasn't certain that the roof in the building I'm sitting in right now was going to stay up in the next five minutes, I wouldn't be sitting here. Mm. You know, but if you're addicted to certainty, oh, I need to know how much I'm going to earn on Friday. Oh, I need to know that you know, the weather's going to be good for my barbecue. I need to know that my partner's not going to leave me. Yeah? Then you're chasing a rabbit you can never catch. Yeah? There is no certainty. And so the, the most prolific, profound, and, and experienced entrepreneurs and successful entrepreneurs that I see aren't smarter. They're not more financially yeah, uh, well off. They certainly don't have a higher IQ. And, you know, otherwise, I wouldn't be in the, in, in the count. <laughs> yeah, they don't have access to credit lines or resources or, or peer groups or business plans, etc. more than other people. None of that. Yeah, that. That's a fool's game if you're chasing that as your primary strategy. Yeah, now, those things can be useful, but if you're chasing it as the key to success, you're going to chase your tail. And that, that's a tunnel with no cheese. So instead, if you start to appreciate the fact that the quality you want to cultivate is the ability to handle uncertainty, if you build that muscle then everything else gets handled. Everything else can be dealt with. But if you build the muscle of thinking you need a better business plan but don't handle the uncertainty that's inherent with when that business plan doesn't go according to plan, then you're in trouble. Does that make sense? Mm. So uh, my entrepreneurial journey has taught me uh, many tools and, and uh, strategies. It's taken me places where I never thought I would go. Um, and of course, I didn't know about all these challenges before I started. Um, how can so the second part of my question in, in relation to certainty is um, how do we train to become better adept at, um, at being an entrepreneur? What, what are the key elements that we need to do? Is it like exercise? Is it like uh, positive thinking? Is it uh, what are the what are the key skill sets that we need to start training for uh, before we become an entrepreneur? Well, there are. Ourselves? There are definitely several, and you hit a couple of uh, very relevant ones there. I mean, I don't know anybody that can feel successful and not be in shape physically. When I say in shape, I don't mean you don't have to be a vegan Olympian. Yeah, I'm talking about having a level of energy that sustains the drive and passion that's pulling you forward. Yeah, if you if you have a mindset that says, wow, I want to get going, I, I'm going to embrace the world and, and, and take on the challenge, and your body says, yeah, but I need 10, 12 hours sleep a day because I can't get out of bed, then you've got a challenge. If you uh, don't take care of yourself physically, then there's a, a good chance you're not taking care of yourself mentally. Yeah, so the physical body will, if you challenge it and stretch it beyond its comfort zone, it will always return and give you a better version of itself. And it's exactly the same with the mind. If you push yourself into areas where you build the mind muscle, the right habits that you develop, you know, the getting up early, the, the, the seeking ways to add value and contribute rather than the emotionally mature ways of what can I take out of this deal, then you'll start to really develop into a more enlightened entrepreneur. Yeah, say old school of what can I get, what can I take at the expense of others 
is no longer existing as a viable model in today's society. We, we've seen that. We, and we had it through the 80s and, and into the 90s, and now it just the, the world's too small and too connected. It used to be that you could get away with giving poor customer service. Now, 20 seconds later, it's on TripAdvisor and you're punished for it. This podcast is brought to you by MrOutsource.com. Outsourcing to the Philippines done for you. And so, you know, we have to come from a place of raising our own standards for ourselves. Why? Because as everybody knows, how you do anything is how you do everything. If I don't take care of myself physically, then what does that say about what I'm taking care of my finances, what I'm taking care of my partner, what I'm taking care of my relationship with my kids? And so to become a better entrepreneur, develop better habits. Yeah? Start treating yourself physically like you know you would want somebody else to treat you physically. Start you know, looking at what it is that you can do to contribute more to the greater good rather than take from it to feed the insecurities to try and prove to the world you're good enough, which is what I did for many years. So you know, th- those kind of aspects are, are primary. You know, it's the inner world stuff. You can master everything else. You can take a lesson on how to you know, figure out Excel. You can take a lesson on marketing. You can read a book on that somebody spent their entire life on teaching you how to structure deals. Yeah, that's, that's all available. But it doesn't mean anything if it's placed on top of unresolved self-issues where the software that you're running inside is faulty. So how long does it take to... So looking back at my entrepreneur, entrepreneurial journey... Um, I started out thinking I knew everything, uh, quickly learning that I didn't. Um, how would you, what would you start training? Would you start training more uh, becoming fit? If you're unfit, would you change? Because it's hard to change many habits at once. What, what, what habit do you think has the biggest impact for entrepreneurs? Set yourself up to win. It's not about trying to tick boxes off on habits. It's about getting an ideal vision of yourself and moving towards that each day rather than away from it. And if you want to do that, the easiest way is to get a bigger why. You know, why are you doing this? I say, if is it to prove to your parents that you, you're good enough, even though you got the grades that they, they didn't approve of? Is it to prove to your, your brother that you're as successful as he is? Is it to prove to your ex-girlfriend that when she called you a loser that she was wrong? Yeah, if it's all of these moving away from kind of motivations, they have limited power because it's all about you. If instead, you know, we just start to decide that, you know, what is it that I'm going to do with the gift of life that I've got? You know, I'm here for a reason. It's not to work 40 hours a week for 40 years to retire on you know, a pension that I can't buy you know, 40 cups of coffee on. So you know, if I'm saying, you know, what's my why? Why am I doing this? What's, what, what's the, the avenue of, of greatness that I want to express as the, 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 you know, the, the vision of life that I have? Get inspired. You know, get, get, start reading inspirational books. Surround yourself with inspirational people that you look up to that have done what it is that you want to do. Listen to what their life story is about. And stop making excuses for yourself yeah, and set yourself up to win. It's take small steps and celebrate them. If you can't run yeah, five kilometers right now, then you know, run 500 yards and give yourself a pat on the back. And tomorrow, try run 550. You know, don't, don't beat yourself up because you're not doing it. You know, start swapping out the sodas for you know, good quality water. You know, start you know, taking the, the, the salad rather than the, the, the fries. Yeah, there's, there's many different ways you can start as, as incremental steps, but don't do it as a struggle and effort. Shift your identity. If you see yourself as a failure that's trying to become successful, you will forever sabotage yourself. If you see yourself as yeah, a dynamic, successful entrepreneur that's wealthy and it's just that the, the bank balance hasn't caught up yet because you're running so fast far ahead, then great. But you're still a dynamic, successful entrepreneur. I don't care if anybody else sees that. I'm not living in their world. This is my reality. Yeah, so it's shifting that mindset every time. It's the only thing you need to do. It's not about waiting for the fairy godmother to drop the opportunity of a lifetime in your lap. That's Disneyland thinking. Instead, own yourself, step up, raise your game, get a bigger why, set a vision that inspires you, and go swing the bat, win or lose. Do you agree with me if I say that uh, the entrepreneurial journey is counterintuitive? So let's say you've had a traditional upbringing, you've gone to school, you've gone to university, then maybe you work for a while, and then you enter, you start thinking about becoming an entrepreneur, and then you start, and then you realize, oh, this isn't working, what I used to do doesn't work. Um, do you agree with me that it's counterintuitive in terms of our uh, training from society and most, most parents? 
Uh, no, I, I think counterintuitive is the way that we're brought up by society and our parents. Yeah, and natural ability is to want to go out and contribute and add value. So yeah, the conditioning that we've had is counterintuitive to that, but that was counterintuitive to our, our very nature. Now, you know, don't get me wrong, most of the people listening to this podcast are business-minded entrepreneurs or those wanting to seek to become one, and, and I fully respect that. But you also have to respect the fact that that's not the journey for some people and, and be okay with that. Yeah, it's not a judgment thing. It's not a better or worse. There are different people that just don't want to have that level of you know, embracing uncertainty or, or, or going out. And their gift is to support the people that do, without which you know, people like you and I would you know, fall flat on our face. You know, every, every little part of the watch is critical for making the, the, you know, keeping the time. So it's not about, as I say, thinking that we're more significant or superior. You know, there'd, be, there'd be nobody to serve us in McDonald's if there was nobody in McDonald's. Right? Not that I'd ever read there, but you get the point. So, yeah, is it counterintuitive? Our very upbringing and conditioning of society to dumb down the entrepreneurial spirit is counterintuitive. But if that's where some people lie, that's where some people lie. That's, uh, that's cool. But getting out there and breaking the habit that school has been put in simply takes one shift in awareness. To recognize that if I'm earning X amount a week in a job, it means I will always settle for less than what I'm worth because that job has to be worth more than X to the business owner. Otherwise, he wouldn't be giving it all to us because there'd be no benefit in for, his, uh, for him. So you know, from, uh, from that basis, you know, if, if you want to um, understand that you know, I, I want to live my life supporting somebody else's dream as a, as a, uh, and play that role, and that's great, or I want to yeah, listen to my heart if it's telling me that I was born to captain my own ship – then cut the ties from the shore and set sail. Yes, it's going to get stormy. Yes, you may sink. But who cares? That's life. That's you know, Go play the game. We're living in a time in human history where it's impossible to starve to death. You know, we're the first generation of humans that have ever had food certainty. I know that because my parents had rations in the war. Mm. So you know, we're living in a time that is, is so unprecedented where there's so much bubble wrap around the ability to become an entrepreneur if you really want to do it, there's no excuse not to. So it's the, it's the best time ever to start a business. Of course it is. I mean, you, again, you're looking at technology now where for a few dollars a month, you can have access to applications that would previously have taken you millions of dollars in R&D to, to take on yourself. You've got more computing power in the palm of your hand than anybody had in a, in a, in a suite of offices in the 90s. What are what, so I'm I'm always interested in the entrepreneurial journey. So, what are some of the things that you were confronted with early in your career? Um, something like people trying to talk you out of your business. Uh, you know that you saw the world as a place of scarcity. Um, you know that you were fearful of not having enough money to pay bills. What, what were some of the normal uh, challenges that you had in your your career? Um, that you also know other people will probably experience when they start a business. Yeah, all of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember my best friend turning around when I started my first business selling toys on the markets, saying, you know, when are you going to get a real job? What, what were you playing at this like, car boot sale stuff for? And, you know, he didn't get it. Uh, and today he's still one of my best friends. He's still employed. And, um, yeah, he's, uh, uh, he'll always you know, usually have too much month at the end of the money. Uh, and so... You know, from, from my side, but he, he's happy, and I'm, I'm happy that he's happy. But it wasn't my path. But I had to overcome the indignation, the criticism, the judgment, the, the ridicule, the, uh, and uh, at the time of people that you know, couldn't understand my model of the world. But I wanted it more than I wanted the life that they had. Yeah, and I was prepared to yeah, not be driven by the good opinion of other people, what I call goop. You know, so many people spend their life swimming in goop that they never really get the bat off their shoulder and live authentically, which, as I said earlier, is the real purpose of, of connecting to life. You know, the real purpose of being in life is to express life, to enjoy life, to connect to life, to have a life. Not to sit there moping about the fact that you, you, know, you haven't got the latest iPad Air or you know, your friend's got a better car that you know, they can just barely afford the payments on than you can. You know, that's, that's bullshit. That's about you know, how do I keep up with the Joneses. And the challenge is, you know, having spoken to thousands of Joneses around the world, yeah, they all say the same thing. They wish that the person next door would quit so that they can quit. Yeah? Stop buying better shit so that I need to stop buying better shit so that we can stop competing. Again, authenticity rather than trying to convince everybody else that, yeah, uh, that you've got more money by spending the only money you've got on propping up that image. 
So you know, getting getting out of the good opinion of others and living your own life, irrespective of you know, people's supposed validation, is is a huge part of that. You know, being prepared to fall down and understand that you know you fall down eight times, get up nine times. That's the game. You know, we can't take anything with us at the end of this life. The only people that tried that were the Egyptians, and we dug it up and stole it. <laughs> right. So yeah. It's it's not about you know how do I get to the end? Here's here's what I know. I, I would rather spend my fortune on having lived than try and accumulate everything to get to the end of the game thinking I've won, only to realize nobody else was really keeping score. Mm. Yes. So what are some of the other things that you were challenged by um, early on? Uh, how do you deal with, with fear? Um, fear of losing a contract, fear of, um, fear of failure. I think fear of failure is a really big one for entrepreneurs starting out. It, sure, because it what we associate, it's, it's what we associate to the word failure. If we tie our self-worth with our net worth, then if we fail in business and it has a knock-on effect to our net worth, it drags our self-worth down, which triggers the primary fear that we all have, which is the fear that we're not enough. Mm. So if you have your self-worth and your net worth tied together, you will always fear failure. Mm. If you start to understand that I am not my bank balance, if I lost everything tomorrow, it wouldn't change who I am. It'd be a damn good excuse to go again. I might have to live in a smaller house. I might have to take the bus instead of driving McLaren. But who cares? Yeah, that's, that, that's the temporary manifestation of, of certain aspects of life that have, you know, go up and down, just like the vicissitudes of life always will. Yeah, spring always follows winter, unless you choose to mope about the fact of how cold it was last season. <laughs> um, so one, one thing that I find challenging is that, you know, I'll wake up, I'll have some auto-programmed uh, things from years of training of... of uh, that I don't really use, software I don't really want or use anymore. Um, but sometimes I do need to be reminded of how I want to use um, the new software that I've got. Um, is it through repetition in, that... In what respect? Sorry? In what respect, sorry? Well, sometimes, you know, I'll go, oh, I, re I really want this deal to go through instead of saying, oh, how can we help these people... Um, in a bigger way so instead of you know i become focused on what i can get out of something instead of giving first and then getting later um you know very sort of animalistic um behavior in terms of business and you know, what can i get and uh, you know me 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 rather than how can i create more value for more people so um, my consciousness is lower than i'd like it to be um you know some some days i become uh, like I used to be rather than who I want to be. How do you maintain a higher level of consciousness um, no matter what happens? <laughs> well, for a start, I don't think there's any such thing. You, you, there, there is a stage of consciousness that you reside at, and there is a state of consciousness that you can you know, you know, travel through. So you know, sometimes, even though your stage of, of consciousness or awareness, whichever label you want to use, is high, you can have moments where your state of consciousness at that particular time is somewhat low. So, you know, it's not about saying, oh, my God, I'm going to beat myself up because I'm down. I mean, that's, I say, that's, that's the ups and downs of life. You know, everything in life at the, from the microscopic subatomic level up to the, the, the biggest level, yeah, oscillates. It, 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 it waves to and fro, up and down, north, south, positive, negative, masculine, feminine, yin, yang. You know, there's always a, uh, a, a, an ebb and flow so trying to judge yourself by staying all the way as an enlightened entrepreneur 24-7 is just unrealistic. Yeah? I, I've sat on mountains with some of the, the, the most incredible Zen masters on, on the planet, and even they have bad days meditating. This podcast is brought to you by MrOutsource.com. Outsourcing to the Philippines done for you. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's not about that. It's where do you choose to live versus where do you allow yourself to visit? So you know, if you have uh, uh, an intention that you know, I'm, I want to raise my level of consciousness, I want to raise my level of awareness, then one of the first things is make sure you don't come from scarcity. You're not trying to force anything to happen. You're trusting a higher level of intelligence, you know, the same one that beats your heart 100,000 times a day. You know, if I had to set an alarm 
to remind myself as to where to pump blood in my body so that everything got what it needed, I'd oversleep and die. <laughs> you know, there's a, there is a more smarter level of intelligence that governs the overarching aspect of life. And if you don't believe that, then you're in trouble. And now people that are too scarcity focused on trying to maintain control of life and have life fit their pictures as to how they think it should look, and they're usually the most stressed out because that'll never happen, yeah, are the ones that don't buy into that or it's like well yeah it's all right when i get a million bucks in the bank then i'll start thinking all that spiritual crap no, but yeah, unfortunately the outer world follows the inner world not the other way around if you've got chaos in your outer world hmm, i don't even have to ask what your thinking is i already know hmm. now, if you've got some level of understanding of of the fundamental aspects of life and nature where it's about growth and contribution and you're looking to serve and add value yeah, then you've got less chaos in your outer world. It's, you know, it's not rocket science. Um, and rocket science is something I've been involved in for, for several years. So yeah, <laughs> I know a little bit about that as well. But you know, from, from my side, if you dip down, as long as you catch yourself there, and it's not a default level of programming, then you can unstick yourself. Don't beat yourself up. We all have off days, as I said. So if you have a situation where, you know, oh, wow, I was really mean to my partner and I didn't really mean it, well, then go and apologize. Yeah, I'm really sorry, honey. I, I was in a, uh, a poor state. You caught me at a bad time. I take full responsibility. I'm sorry if I hurt you. Come give me a hug. I mean, most guys are so egocentric, they don't even know how to pronounce that. Yeah, I was certainly where I was for, for a while, and it cost me a lot of beautiful women in my life. So you know, raising your level of awareness so that you can, it's not about you starts with coming out of scarcity, recognizing that Everything in nature grows and contributes beyond itself. Otherwise, it's taken out of the food chain. You know, animals don't die of old age in nature. You know, when they can no longer contribute, they contribute themselves to something else's lunch. Mm. And so you know, what are we doing to serve, to add value, to keep things moving around? Why do we need to control? Where does that come from in us? We're trying to control the outer world. Uh, because we've got a... <laughs> an association as to what we think will make us happy. And if we're told in condition that in order to be happy, you need to have so much money and so much this and so much that and drive this car and have these kind of friends and you know, eat in this kind of restaurant, then if the outer world doesn't fit those pictures, we're too busy trying to grab it by the throat and bend it into shape. But the outer world is a mirror. It will reflect back what it is that you're thinking and putting into it. The only challenge is there's a delay. And we don't get that because it also responds to immediate force. So if you, know, you get angry with the mirror, why are you possibly surprised that the reflection gets angry back? Hmm. And so trying to control the outer world is futile. You know, I spent many, many years, uh, Ellen, trying to control reality, trying to fight reality. Do you know what I found out? You got tired. The son of a bitch kept winning. Right. Yeah, there's, there's no way. Now, yeah, you can swim upstream if you wish, but it takes a lot of effort, and it's possible. A lot of people get their goals by swimming upstream. You know, work hard, dive in, persistence, conquer your goals, blah, blah, blah. But the second you take your foot off the gas and relax, the current takes you back. Rather than appreciate the fact that we can set goals that are downstream and allow the current to take us towards it if we don't fight the outer world. If we allow ourselves to go with the left turn when life presents as a curveball and roll with it rather than fight it and kick and scream and bitch about it, we tend to find that that curve around the corner takes us to a better place that we just were freaking out about because we didn't have visibility around the corner. Make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, so having trust that the river is going the, the way you want it to be or the, the way it's meant to, be, meant to go. Well, the river... Yeah, as long as you... An intention. Now, if you're sitting in the river meditating, don't be upset if you crash into a boulder or hit the bank or capsize. You, know, you can't meditate out of a traffic jam. Mm. Now, you have to consciously steer yourself in the river, so be mindful. Take the right actions. Be busy. Move your feet in the direction towards your goal. Yeah, Keep your finger on, on the trigger of where you're going in the river. But once you start to fight the current, that's when you have a challenge. Mm. So let's talk about your, your, your companies that you started. Um, what's been your most enjoyable company and what's been your biggest uh, de devil company? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
there's uh, there's there's been many. I mean, my goodness, over the last quarter century, I, I, I've lost count, as I say, as to how many um, uh, ideas that you know should have stayed ideas when I was drunk. Um, you know, how many uh, ideas that have become you know successful? You know, to this day, I mean, some great legacies around e- energy, health, and fitness. You know, 120 odd health clubs now. Yeah, tens of millions of dollars a year. Um, you know, the Worldwide Health Corporation, which pioneered anti-aging nutraceuticals into Europe in the late 90s, early 2000s, still going very strong today. Yeah, there's um, uh, there's been yeah, a, a lot of really good things. I mean, space energy has taken up a lot of my time over the last several years, which is the commercialization of space solar power. Uh, I've now handed that over to the United Nations, and as a result, we've we've already got it on the agenda. A national policy and energy agenda of several major world governments, which I'm very proud of. You know, we, we couldn't make that a commercial success at this stage, but you know, I've, I'm happy to have left a thumbprint on humanity in a way that allows that technology to progress in a way that you know accelerates the benefit for humankind. Uh, that I've got no issues with, um, uh, and, and many other things in, in between. I mean, there there, there was a uh, a business which I started when I was you know 21, which rarely appears on my resume. I'll, uh, I don't think I've mentioned it on, on any podcast, but I actually started a mail escort agency when I was in my very early 20s, okay. supplying, supplying mail escorts to ladies, um, and that became the largest of its kind in Europe. That was, that was great fun for a young 20-odd-year-old kid. I mean, I think that was the first time my mum realized I wasn't going to become Pope. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I sold that. Uh, there's been uh, uh, pioneered the, the casting industry, where I was the first person in Europe to, to really switch to database casting uh, rather than filing cabinets, which um, uh, everybody was using pre Windows 95. Um, uh, obviously, publishing, advertising, uh, um, a lot in, in real estate, property, land development, renovation. I mean, it's 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 all been a journey. It's all been a ride. You know, I, I set a company up once that. Um, uh, we, we had a, 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 a news, uh, like a CNN or a News at 10 set built from scratch, an exact replica, and we went around the country um, getting people that, whose life's ambition was to read the news, to, to read the news and film it and, and sell them a tape. Yeah, we, we had a lot of fun doing that. Yeah, there, there's been, been many things. Some of them, as I say, were, were commercial disasters. Some wiped me out. Some, as I say, should have yeah, stayed ideas. And some have, have helped change the world. You know, I've been, it, it's been a, a real blessed ride. So, yeah, my, my, my lesson out of that is that I, I've never shied away from an idea that I felt had value. Uh, swing the bat and, and get in the game. Uh, there's a great book out there called uh, yeah, Ready, Fire, Aim. And, uh, and it talks again about you know, get in the game, swing the bat, and then figure it out. So many people make the mistake, especially entrepreneurs, of confusing or masking procrastination under the guise of research. And what they're really doing is they're delaying their ability to handle uncertainty because they're looking for certainty and, oh, I'll just do more research. I'll just find out. I'll just look at here. No, screw that. Yeah? Just because you need to do 15 hours of research online to find the right hotel to like, no, book a flight, land and figure it out. Get in the game. So there's that aspect of that. that I've always had that level of, well, I don't know anything about this industry, which means I'm probably perfectly suited for getting in it. Yeah? Let's, let's dive in with both feet and see what happens. <laughs> and then we figure it out because we're in the game. So I, I guess a lot of people listening to this right now are going, how on earth did you manage to start all these companies? What, what, what's your strategy in terms of starting a company? Because obviously you can't do it all yourself. Well, very simple. No, nobody told me I couldn't. And that's, that, that's how I managed to do it. I, I didn't listen to the people who said I couldn't. Mm-hmm. You know, starting a company today is like 50 bucks online. That, that, that's, that's not an issue. You know, we're living in a time now where you can outsource all of the skill sets for like 4 to $5 an hour. Uh, I mean, things like my-pa.com will give you a virtual assistant with a team of people for you know, like $5 an hour you know, that are highly qualified. You know, you, you've got you know, the whole four-hour work week you know, principle of virtual outsourcing. You know, so there's no excuse right now. You know, back in the days when I started business, a lot of the time, you needed you know, huge infrastructure. You know, I spent a million dollars refitting a, a health club yeah, because that's what the CapEx was required. Yeah, to, today, yeah, to get access to high-level software um, uh, and infrastructure, uh, people, talent, you can do it with virtually nothing. Yeah, that's the world we're living in. The barrier to entry to be an entrepreneur has not only been lowered, Erland, it's been freaking destroyed. Now, there's, there's just so much available right now, which is so exciting for so many people. You don't need to sign a big office with a 20-year lease you know, to get a bank loan, to borrow half a million dollars to build out your infrastructure. To, it's bullshit. 
All you need now is the right level of intention to add value to people in an area that you're passionate about and solutions and resources will present themselves. So let's talk about Millionaire Business School. You now do uh, speaking, training, uh, you have your, your high level group as well. Tell us about how people can work with you and what's going on in your current business. Well, well thank you. I, uh, I've, I took all of the best of what I've learned over the last 25 years and, and try to address the, question, the most common questions that most entrepreneurs and would-be entrepreneurs ask. Now, the would-be entrepreneurs, as you said, is how do I start? How do I take an idea and you know, stack the deck in my favor for commercial success? What are the tricks and tips and techniques and shortcuts that, without spending money, allow me to become dramatically successful? Uh, how do I fix the mindset of some of the things we've spoken about on this podcast uh, to you know, allow myself to become the entrepreneur in advance so that you know, I stack you know, all of the, the dice you know, in, uh, 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 loaded in, in my favor. You know, for existing businesses, how do I outmarket my competition in a, in a time where we get 30,000 commercial messages a day, where everybody's vying for the same little piece of real estate of the, your client's mind? You know, how do I stand out? How do I do that without you know, spending more on my marketing budget? How do I outthink my competitors rather than try and outpurchase them in media? Yeah, so I, I put all of that together in the most condensed um, and transformational course that I could do, which I call the Millionaire Business School. I'm, I'm very proud of it. It's, it, and it is. It's, it's not about giving people information. Yeah, we're in an age now where people are drowning in information, but they're starving for wisdom. And so how do I create transformation, not information? Because that's what people really deserve. And you, know, you come to the Millionaire Business School, you leave in three days, you know, not with the best strategies on how to make a million dollars, I'll guarantee that, but you leave a different person, you see life differently, you interact differently, you've got the tools, techniques, and mindset to become the success you were born to be. So that's, that's there, I mean, you can find details on my website, petersage.com, and uh, I'm running one in London shortly, and yeah, I'm, I'm very excited, it's, it provides a real good platform for saving a lot of the mistakes that I'm, I'm glad that you know, I actually made so that I can teach others how not to. And uh, what, what other things are you working on? Let's say you're, you're a high-end entrepreneur. Let's say you have a few companies, uh, but you're looking for that one person to, to guide you. Is that something you do as well? Uh, well, my, my mentorship program one-on-one, -on -one, I've actually stopped uh, doing. My, my time is too valuable for that. I did run the elite mentorship program, but uh, and that was a transformational program that was uh, my one-on-one -on -one time. I've actually shifted that. I thought, you know, how can I take the benefit of the one-on-one the, the -on -one mentorship and allow me to reach more people? So I created the Elite Mentorship Forum, which is really a peer group and a mastermind group that I guide people through a series of awareness and learnings through over a six-month period that you know, they have a, uh, not only just me, because I don't want to make it about me. I, I, I teach you how to design yourself out of the equation so the business doesn't own you. you know, I need to do the same for myself. So it's about you know, giving you a peer group uh, that you can raise up to and a, a series of learnings that really take you to a different level. So that's really the mentorship side of what I do now is, is the Elite Mentorship Forum. Again, all details can be found on my website. So guys, you heard it here. Peter Sage, if you want to learn from a millionaire that has actually started multiple companies, followed through, has an amazing philosophy around being an enlightened entrepreneur, then check out petersage.com and see if he has any workshops coming up soon in a town near you. Peter, thank you for being on the show. Alan, thank you. My absolute pleasure. You, you're doing great work on providing a medium for people to, to yeah, that you're really helping with, and um, it's a pleasure to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. This podcast is brought to you by MrOutsource.com. Outsourcing to the Philippines done for you. Mr. Outsource is a recruitment company matching busy entrepreneurs with Filipino virtual assistants, so you can have the time to focus on what's important. 